So we're here today to watch a quick video that I made uh, the other day while uh, being outside in Edgewater Park working on a painting um, of a water tower that I've wanted to do actually for quite some time now. Um, you know, I would drive by and think, oh, I'm going to do that someday. So I figure, yeah, this video is really the, the perfect time to do that. So um, I'm going to be explaining my process a little bit here. So uh, right now I'm just picking out three basic colors uh, for my underpainting. And normally what I try to do is pick um, either one color or as many as three. Um, normally if it's uh, two colors, then it's the idea of white and black, but instead I'm using a color, a dark color and a lighter color. Here I'm doing uh, a light, a mid-tone, and a shadow. Um, so I like to kind of have a sort of color pattern underneath my paintings, even if I do try to match more of what's there naturalistically uh, by the end of the painting. I still like to have some of these peaks, you know, these other colors, otherworldly colors peeking through a little bit. So the colors I have are like a flesh tint, a uh, sap green, and a, uh, a lizard and crimson. So uh, something very, very different than what was in front of me that day. I mean, it was an afternoon, so. Uh, yeah, sunset. Um, so here I'm just kind of sketching a little bit. Normally I would bring a sketchbook with me sort of to figure out where I want everything to sit, like where that water tower is. Um, so even if I'm covering that up right now with a uh, base coat of like a brown made with that sap green and the alizarin crimson, um, I still kind of have this a little bit of a muscle memory or an idea of where I want this to eventually go. Um, so I start with the, the focus, and uh, the great thing is with this paint right now, I'm actually using gouache. Um, it's a water-soluble medium. Um, you can pick it up, so it, it's sort of an in-between between acrylic and watercolor. Um, so it, it dries opaquely. Uh, unlike watercolor or acrylic, though, you can actually uh, move it around a bit. So if you just have a damp rag like I have here, uh, if you make a mistake, you can just wet that rag or use like a little spritzer and just re-wet the, the gouache and, and move it around a bit. Uh, so it kind of is like uh, oil paint in, in that regard. Um, the reason I started using it was I liked the, uh, I didn't like that my oil painting underpaintings were uh, still wet and I don't really use paint thinner. So this was a uh, way to uh, get around that. So um, I did start with a red and I felt like that was just too strong of a red to begin with. Uh, so I kind of went a little bit more, uh, you know, brown, uh, a little bit more subtle and I figured I could build up the color as I go along. Um, so the, the sky in front of me was actually a blue. So that's kind of where I just went, all right, I'm going to go totally different. I'm going to do this sort of sap green or leaf green looking color uh, and that might be kind of interesting. Um, I thought at the time was that the um, sky having sort of two cool colors even though it's a it's a very warm yellow um, was that it wouldn't it, it would still have visual interest with those colors but it also um, wouldn't take away from the main focus that water tower there. Um, so since the water tower is sort of like a reddish, orangey, rusty color, um, I wanted to sort of do like a uh, complementary color scheme here with a green sky and then have that red sort of uh, uh, building right there. So uh, another thing that I try to focus on here is uh, just having really interesting brush strokes. Um, you know, I, even if they get covered up later on, then at least I can still, um, you know, at, at least I'm looking, I, I have choices later on when I'm doing that oil painting part. So right here, I'm just sort of reinforcing the shadows uh, with a little bit more of a, uh, of that alizarin crimson. Now, my thought is that as I go on, I can make that a little bit more purple 
in there with the oil paint if I really want to. Um, it really just depends on where the painting's taking me. Um, I really like to sort of kind of go in with a plan, but not necessarily have to stick to it. If there's sort of an idea I have in my head where I go, you know, things are going pretty okay, but I sort of done this before. What if I just pop in an orange or, you know, what if I just do this? Um, then, you know, I like to have that option. Uh, not always. Sometimes, you know, just doing something spontaneously uh, just for the sake of it can be sort of, uh, you know, it can, it can lead to sort of hazardous results because, you know, you kind of go in with a plan and then you just instantly change the plan and it's sort of like an afterthought or uh, just doesn't go along with the, the rest of the way the, pa the painting was heading. So, um, you know, but, but here for the most part, I kind of had it all laid out. Um, the video kind of, uh, we're skipping ahead now. This is the oil painting part. Uh, so this is that blue that I was talking about. So uh, I believe I used like a manganese blue with some, uh, with some white, uh, you know, and, and possibly a, uh, a cobalt blue too, just to have a little bit more uh, variety in those brush strokes. And I kind of like to do dirty brush strokes, which is that, um, you know, th they aren't, they aren't, perfect clean mixes of paint that way again it leads to some really interesting interplay of uh of color that's a little bit more spontaneous it's not just a flat blue it's um a blue that maybe has little little hints of purple in it over here but also has maybe a little hints of like a green over here so um so this is what i was saying before i i like the idea of sort of letting some of that green peeking through so this is where i'm sort of making those choices and those decisions of uh where do i want to go uh with with this do i want to uh have really interesting brush strokes is this part here uh taking away too much from the focus uh is this too big of a shape of green that it's distracting now um, so yeah, I was really starting with the background first, and then as I go forward, uh, typically I try to work towards the, uh, work towards the focus of the painting. So, and it's hard to see there, you'll see it later on, uh, at the end, but there, there are some interplays of, uh, of color. You can actually kind of see it right now, there's a little bit of, uh, yellow that I mixed in, uh, with the white towards the bottom and then up towards the top it goes a little bit more to a, a purple it's very subtle but again it's still playing on that complementary color um, idea that I mentioned earlier and in, in case you don't know I mean complementary color on, the, on a color wheel is um, just you know red uh, and green are across from each other uh, blue and orange are across from each other and uh, yellow and purple are across from each other so normally that's a very dramatic uh, color uh, dynamic. Um, yeah, so now I'm working on those trees because again, like the, the trees aren't the focus that water tower is. Um, so a lot of times, even if it's something in the foreground, I like to uh, work on some of these elements um, first. And then at the end, kind of work on the focus uh, and, and, you know, maybe make some adjustments here and there uh, with blurring uh, or, or, you know, softening edges here and there just so that we look at this main focus. Um, and that's that's something that takes, a, you know, a little bit to, to learn that restraint. Um, you know, that's something that I, I used to struggle with a lot and, and can to this day a little bit is figuring out how loose or how um, how strict or tight or mechanical to, to make something look. So if you notice, um, I'm using a, a palette knife here. Uh, I've kind of gone a bit between using brushes and palette knives. Um, I actually really love palette knives. Uh, one main reason is you don't have to really wash them. You just take a towel and clean it right off. But um, yeah, so this is the finished product here. So I'm actually really happy with the way that it, it turned out. Um, 
so that was pretty much just going from the beginning to the midpoint of the, the painting. As you can see, um, I did end up changing a little bit of the composition. Uh, that, that bottom left corner was really starting to bother me uh, just because I was looking at the tower, but then towards the, uh, but then I felt like I looked there, I looked down at the trees, and then my eyes instantly went sloping down to the bottom left corner and it didn't really uh, come back up. So now when you look at the tower, I feel like my eyes go to the trees again, but then they kind of go over to the other trees, which then pick back up to that cloud in the top left and come back to the tower. Uh, so it's a nice circular sort of uh, composition. So yeah, but uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was definitely an exciting thing to work on. And uh, yeah, hope you all have a great day.